Praise God. We thank you all so much for joining us today. We are so glad here at Greater Faith to have um, a celebration of our ministerial Sundays. It's not really a celebration, but an opportunity for our ministers to come to us, to bring us a word. We do have two ministers at Greater Faith, um, Minister Jeffrey Tan and Minister Reginald Ballard, um, and they will be bringing a word every third Sunday. And so, of course, today is third Sunday, and Minister Ballard is prepared to bring a word to us today, and we're excited about it. So I'm going to ask um, that Minister Ballard just come to us and however the Lord has led him and is directing him um, so that we can hear what God has to say to the church today. We've already opened up. For those of you who are just joining, we've already opened up. We've already given our announcements. So um, we want to hear a word from the Lord today. Praise God. So Minister Bella, it's in your hands. Good morning, greater faith and friends. Uh, there is a word from the Lord today. Uh, I'm going to tell you like I always tell you, I won't be before you long, but there is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles, come on, turn with me, please, to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter. We're going to be reading from verse 1, 1 through 11. Second Peter, verse 1, 1 through 11. And it reads, this letter is from Simon Peter, a slave, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you all who share in the same precious faith we have. Faith given by Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, who makes us right with God. May God bless you with his special favors and wonderful peace as you come to know Jesus. Our God, our Lord, better and better. Verse 3. As we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need to live a godly life. He has called us to receive his own glory and goodness. And by that same mighty power, he has given us all the rich and wonderful promises. He had promised that you will escape decadence all around you, caused by evil desires, and that you will share in his divine nature. So make every effort to apply the benefits of these promises to your life. Then your faith will produce a life of moral excellence. A life of moral excellence leads to knowing God better. Knowing God leads to self-control. Self-control leads to patient endurance. Patient endurance leads to godliness. Godliness leads to love. Let's put a pen right there. Church family, that's what we need in this world today is more love. Seems like every which way you turn, everybody is turning to this thing called hate. Do you not know hate is not of God that it is of the enemy? So what must I need to do? Embrace this thing called love. In the Bible, um, God is spoken in figurative terms as such as love. That is one of his, one of his attributes. Uh, godliness leads to love for other Christians. And finally, you will grow to have genuine love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more you will become productive and useful of your knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop these virtues are blind, or at least very short-sighted. They have already forgotten that God has cleansed them from their old life of sin. So their brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Doing this, you would never stumble or fall away. And God will open wide the gates of heaven for you to enter into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
if y'all don't mind, uh, if I can use for a topic this morning, brace yourself. Be ready. He's coming back. Brace yourself. Be ready. He's coming back. Well, preacher, what are you saying when you say brace myself? The Bible tells me that no man knows the minute nor the hour when he shall return. But therefore, that's why God has given me to give you. You have to be ready. He's coming back. What must I do to prepare to be ready? First of all, I have to acknowledge God. Secondly, I have to have a relationship with God. I have to know who I am. Church family and friends, I, I can't let you tell me who I am. You got to know and experience God for yourself. Peter is called to stand firm in the midst of numerous of pressures, to drifting from the truth. That's why he's writing this letter. This is his second letter to God's people. He's writing uh, to advise them to stand firm on the word of God. He advised them that the world is seeking to undo all that God is doing. Church family, if you, if you watch, look, and listen, those of you all that's trying to walk right, those of you all that are trying to talk right, it seems like everything you do, the enemy is against you. But can I tell you that trials come to make you strong? You're not doing it for naught. You're doing it for the glorification of God. Just hold on. Just hold on. Be ready. Brace yourself. You can't brace yourself and you can't be ready outside of the anointing that God has given you. Jesus told his disciples, uh, when I, where I go, I'm going to send you that which you need. Church family, that's the Holy Spirit. Your money won't make a way. Your last name won't make a way. Your flesh won't make a way because the Bible say in the end time, all that you see is going to pass away. God is waiting on you. You're not waiting on God. Brace yourself. Peter states, there's hope in eternal life. That's the life after this life. Don't you want to go? There's hope in eternal life. There's going to be no more headaches. There's going to be no more heartaches. There's, not, there's going to be no more uh, sin. Can I say it like that? You all know what sin entails. It entails a whole lot of stuff. I know you want Minister Ballard to be real, like I always am. It entails a whole lot of cussing and fussing and raising you know what. Peter says, there's hope in eternal life. Life after this life. God has given us a privilege, the privilege of being born again. All you have to do, God stands at the door and knock. If you open up this thing called your heart, he'll come in. And the Bible says that he'll suck with you and you sit with him. But you have to do something yourself. You have to turn from your wicked ways. You got to turn to him. You got to embrace that relationship. You can't tell me that you can do everything that everybody else is doing and you got a relationship with God. You can't tell me that you got a relationship with God and you're doing what the world is throwing at you. The Bible says that nothing should ought to separate us from the love of God. It says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of God. Well, preacher, well, what must I do? The Bible says, set in the show thyself, approve a workman unto God, rightly dividing the true word of God. I don't have to prove anything to you all. I, I, I have to prove to God so God can stamp the approval on me. Oh, y'all heard me. Peter talks about exercising self-control. Exercising self-control. Church family and friends, that's not anything that's easy to do today. With the way that the world is throwing things at us, that's nothing to 
that we can utilize that easy. You have to grow into it. The Bible said you start out on baby food. Then you eventually graduate to solid food. But you have to exercise self-control. I can't let uh, the wind blow and it shake me. I can't let what you say to me shake me. I can't let the way you look at me shake me. I got to be ye steadfast, immovable, always abiding in the word of God. Y'all ain't heard me. If I do that, that would make me look forward to the blessings that God has for me when he returns. I have to brace myself. I have to be ready. I know grandmama said it. I know mama said it. I know preacher said it. I know prophet said it. Even way back in the Old Testament, he's coming back. Well, church family and friends, look around. The handwriting is on the wall. The, uh, uh, I, I know with uh, the way that the world is throwing things, things at us, you know, we have to have the, the faith that the world is going to continue on, but it's not. It's closer now than it was back then. So what must I do? Brace myself. Get under the umbrella of God. Allow God to order my steps. Allow God to uh, order my thinking. Stop Thinking, thinking. Stop thinking uh, about what this world has to throw at us. Well, what's the key to it, preacher? Humble yourself. When you humble yourself, that's not a sign of weakness. Man see it as a sign of weakness. The Bible says that God do a greater work in you when you don't know that you don't know. God do a greater work in you in your weakness. So church family, what are you going to do? You want to go with the flow? Or are you going to let God order your steps? You make no mistake about it when you allow God to order your steps. Peter tells us to obey God because you are his children. Well, don't we obey our father? Some of us do. Now, my wife is an educator, and she uh, she's a school teacher, and she come home and she tell me how roughly, uh, how rude the little kindergartens, pre-K pre, pre kids are. Do you not know that they have to pick that stuff up at home to bring it out into the streets? Well, our father does us the same way. He gives us an opportunity to come to him. He also gives us an opportunity to pick up that other stuff. I heard a preacher preach one time, it's the choices we make. God gives you a choice to do good or do bad. It's your decision what you're going to do. You're going to do good or you're going to do bad. Obey God because you are his children. Doesn't the father chastise his children? Doesn't the father punish his children? Doesn't the father want his children to do the right thing? Don't a father wants his children to be successful and productive? Well, our father uh, who art in heaven, he wants us to do the same thing. He wants us to be the same way. He wants us to, Uncle Sam said, be all you can be. Well, God wants us to be what he's created us to be. He wants us to be all we can be with the help of the anointed or the Holy Spirit that he's given us. God has given us a choice. What are you going to do? Peter Dollar also tells us to respect people of authority. I, I know it gets hard sometimes uh, when it seems like that they are doing it the wrong way. I, I know it seems hard sometimes when it seems like they're telling you what to do when you know better that you shouldn't do. But the Bible tells us to respect people of authority. You know, you may not like, uh, uh, you may not like it, but you have to accept it. In the end time, if you do the right thing, do you not know the Bible says God will let your action uh, test them. God will allow your actions to rub off on them. God will allow them to see the goodness of him in you if you don't buck the system, if you don't uh, 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 rebuke uh, authority. You have to accept authority. 
People talk, Peter talks about suffering for doing good. Do you not know when you try to do good? Come on, Paul. Paul said, when I try to do good, evil was present. Well, we are trying to be like Christ. When we try to do good, there is evil. Her come old Lucifer, old slew foot Lucifer. He got to stick his two cents in there and, and try to drag us down or, or try to block our blessings or, or try to stop us. But when we try to do good, you have to put forth that extra effort to do that which God has ordained you to do. Uh, Y'all ain't heard me. Uh, if you ask about, uh, if somebody asks you about your Christian hope, come on, Peter, be ready to give them a soft answer. Be ready to defend your hope. Your hope is eternal life. Paul tells the Ephesians uh, that earth is not your home. You are supposed to have some characteristics of heaven. You are supposed to, uh, how would you have any characteristics of heaven if you don't have knowledge, if you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't have knowledge of what's going on in heaven? But you are supposed to uh, look forward to the day when Christ returns. He's coming back. Are you braced up? Have you braced yourself? Let me go. I'm not going to be here for you long. Keep your conscience clear. Well, what the world has to throw at you, it's not easy to keep your conscience clear. It's not easy when wife is against you. It's not easy when husband is against you. It's not easy when boss is against you. It's not easy when the enemy is against you. But I have to keep my conscience clear. Do you not know the Bible says, uh, so a man think it, so he is. Well, if I think about stuff, can I, can, can, can I say it like that? If I think about things of this world and, and, and it's clustering my mind, it's clustering my conscience, I'm not keeping my conscience clear. I'm not doing the right things like me. I'm not doing what God would have me to do. Uh, the Bible say, keep your conscience clean. Are you hearing me? As I go back to my text, text uh, uh, knowing Jesus better. His divine power gives us everything we need to live a godly life. That is, if you know the man. Come on, church family. Uh, come on, somebody. Do you know the man? And let me read that again. Uh, 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 knowing Jesus better, that is, his divine power gives us everything we need to live a godly life. You can't tell me that you can know everything about this world and live a life that's pleasing in the eyesight of God. You can't tell me that. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, knowing Jesus better and his divine power gives me everything that I need to live a godly life. He has promised that we, that we will escape the decays around us that's caused by our evil desires. Do you not know if I know Jesus better? If I grow to uh, 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 become attached to Jesus, if I, if I grow to have a relationship with Jesus, do you know all this stuff around me? It don't matter. It doesn't matter, people. Because God is ordering my steps. He says in his words that nothing bad happens to a child of God. Are you a child of God? If you are, then you don't have to worry about what they say. You don't have to worry about what the president say. You don't have to worry about what Congress say. You don't have to worry about this coronavirus. You don't have to worry about all this other stuff in between this thing called life. Are you hearing me, church family? Are you hearing me, friends? You got to know who you are. You got to know who you is. If you know God, then you would escape that sin. I'm not saying that you won't sin. You're still sin. But God is a forgiving God. If I fall, he's right there to pick me up. He's a forgiving God. He, the Bible says that he forgives us 70 times. How many times should I forgive my brother? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, 70 times, 70 times, 70. God will forgive you the very same way. He says in the word, the things that I do, if you live right, if you do the right thing, the things that I do, you shall do better. 
you should do more. <clears throat> he promised that you would escape the decant all around us because of our evil design. God don't give us, God uh, don't give it, you don't need it. If God don't give it, you don't need it. He says, Paul, Peter says that you were sharing his divine nature. We say it's in my nature. Church family, can I share something with you? Your nature is not God's nature. Well, then we have the audacity to say, well, the, the devil made me do it. The devil don't make you do anything. The devil don't make you do anything. He entices you to do a lot of things. But you do, do, you, do you not know that the, everything that the devil entices you to do, he can't do nothing without God stamping the approval? Look at Job. When the angels of the Lord appeared in the presence of the Lord, who was in the midst of them? Nobody but Lucifer. God asked Lucifer, where have you come? Well, bro, God, I've been roaming to and fro, seeking who I can defile. In other words, who I can get to do my dirt. With your church family and friends, do you not know God is looking at you? God is looking at you if you're living right, if you've got a relationship with him. But then he said to Lucifer, Lucifer, have you decided to try my servant, uh, Master Ballard? In all his ways, he tries to please me. Is that what you're doing? Are you trying to live right? Are you trying to please the Lord? That's what God wants from you. Don't worry about the trials that you're faced with. Don't worry about the stuff that you're going through with. They're short-lived, church family. Trials come to make you strong. Don't worry about your bills not being paid. Don't worry about, can, can I be real? Don't worry about your hair turning gray. Don't worry about your teeth falling out. Don't worry about, I'm being real, y'all. I'm trying to put it out there. God, Jesus said uh, his word was as simple as the smallest of the babe would understand it. He didn't stand in the pulpit and use these great, big, elegant words over people's head that nobody would understand it. He wanted us to understand his word. So we would come crying out to him. What must I do, Father, to be saved? That's what he wants from us. As, as I come to a close, you got to brace yourself. You got to open your heart up. You got to allow God to come in. Stop with you. And he'll, if you open your heart, he promised he'll come in. He didn't say it was going to be easy. I tell my family all the time, we are picked out to be picked on. The enemy never know that he can try you unless God allow him to try you. But God has already, you already given in to the, God, to the Lord. God, here I am. Use me. That's what God want to do. He want to use you to conform somebody else's life, to compel somebody else to come to him. Allow God to use your church family. David said, wherever I go, thou art there. If I go in the heights of heaven, thou art there. If I go in the pit of hell, thou art there. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I bring it a little closer? If I go in the liquor house, thou art there. If I go into other places that we go, do you not know God is still there? He makes us a promise. I never leave you. I never forsake you. I was with you at the beginning, and I'll be with you at the end. Paul tells the Corinthians, Paul tells the Corinthians, he says, be strong, unmovable, always And uh, 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 enthusiastic, that's the word I'm looking for. Be enthusiastic. Don't be humdrum, slow, and this and that. Paul tells them, says, uh, be strong, unmovable, all uh, about the work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know nothing you do for the Lord is useless. 
That's what Paul did. Yeah? Nothing you do for God is useless. You might not see it right then, but you know what? God has not forgotten you. He's right there around the corner. He's listening. It's not your time. Just hold on. Don't fold. Don't give up. Peter encouraged the Jewish community and us, don't slip back into your old ways of thinking. Don't slip back into your old ways of doing things. But do you know what, church family and friends? We have a tendency to want to slip back. You know why? The flesh likes its likeness. It's familiar with my past. Well, so is the enemy. Huh? We talked about in Bible study Tuesday night or Wednesday night, we talked about uh, living in bondage. Do you not know the enemy wants to keep you in bondage? He wants to keep you where you come from. So he, in other words, I'm going to leave that right there. He want to keep you where you come from. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John says that Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way. There is no other way that you can get to God, to, to Jesus' Father, to our Father. Jesus is the Father. He says, no, no, other, no man comes unto the Father except through by me. Church family, you got to let your Father be your guide. Church family, you got to let your Father lead you. You got to establish that relationship. Matthew 24 and 44 say, Be ye also ready when he come. Are you going to be ready? Mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell others. Ask yourself and tell God. You have to make that confession to God. I'm ready, Lord. Well, if you tell me that you're ready, if you tell God that you're ready and your actions ain't lining up with his word, then something is wrong. The Bible said a tree is known by the fruit it bear. If you see an apple tree growing a pear, if you see a pear tree growing a peach, then something is wrong. If you see a, 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 a soul, a wannabe child of God that's raised in you know what with everybody else and call itself a child of God, then something is wrong. That's why Matthew said, uh, be ye also ready when he comes. Are you going to be ready? It ain't going to be long, church family and friends. You got to make up your mind. I, I didn't told you now. Uh, so uh, the Bible said, so a person think, so he is. Paul, tell, Paul encouraged Timothy that he is ready to be offered up. I've got a question for you. Are you ready to be offered up? If God comes back today, are you ready? That's a choice. That's something you have to live with, not me. My prayer for me is, God, don't let me be that stumbling block for nobody else. Accept me, Father. Keep my conscience clear. While I'm here on earth, Lord, allow me to do what you would have me to do. Just family and friends, I pray that you all have gotten something from this word. Be ready. Brace yourself. He's coming back. Father God, we thank you, God, for the anointing, for opening up my mind, Lord God, for allowing your word to rest on my heart. Then, Lord, thank you, God, for giving me the option, for giving me the strength to spirit out to these, your people. Now, God, my prayer is that someone had that listening ear then, God, that you have given them that spirit of conviction. Oh, God, that they will turn from their wickedness. Oh, God, that they will turn from you. Turn to you, Lord God. Even more so, Lord God, that they will come crying out, what must I do to be saved? Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, our prayer is that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Not even this coronavirus. Not even what uh, Congress and uh, our president is trying to do. Oh, God, our prayer is, God, that you would keep us. That's what you said in your word, God. You said he who keeps his mind stayed on you. 
Lord God, that you keep him in perfect peace. Oh, Lord God, I, I just want to be ready. I don't know about my family. I don't know about my church family. I don't know about the viewers out there, Lord God. But me, myself, I want to be ready when you come. Realize, in Lord God, that you're coming back. Allow me to brace myself in your words, in your will, in your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Minister Ballot, for um, sharing that word with us today. Amen. Brace yourself. Be ready. Amen. Because we know that God is, without a doubt, coming back. So we bless God for that word today. <clears throat>